Welcome to Raids Explained, the series where I will attempt to demystify raids by explaining both the game mechanics and some strategies you and your team can use to beat them. Veil Guardian is the first raid boss of the first raid wing, Spirit Veil, otherwise known as Wing 1. Wing 1 is often used as the training wing, and its mechanics are not complex, but they do still warrant explanation and understanding, and there are lots of little things you can do to make it go more smoothly. Before you begin, your squad should include a few DPS players who use condition damage, and you'll see why in a moment, and some players will need boon rip. You'll also need a few people who have push or knockback skills, and pretty much everyone should bring some CC. Finally, Veil vale Guardian fixates on the player with the highest toughness stat, so whoever that is will be your tank. The pre-event will have you face each of the three guardians, red, green, and blue, and the fight starts as soon as you aggro one. These mini bosses serve to help teach you the mechanics you'll see in the real fight just after. The red guardian is only vulnerable to condition damage, hence the need to have a few Condi DPS players. It also constantly spawns floating red orbs which will slowly move towards the group and inflict pain when they're nearby, so here's where you'll want to use those pushes and knockbacks to keep them off group. Once Red Guardian hits 1% health, it will gain a Defiance bar, so simply break the bar with CC skills to defeat it. Green Guardian has what is perhaps the most punishing mechanic known as Blues or Teleports. During the fight, circles will appear under each player. After a brief moment, they will burst, and anyone standing in the Blues will get teleported away to a random location in the arena. I find players often struggle with this mechanic the most, as when you're new to raiding, deciphering all the visual noise is usually the biggest challenge, and new raiders simply don't see them, and it can take some time to train your eyes to pick them out quickly. In addition to the blue circles on the ground, when you're standing in the blue, you will gain a glowing gold border around your screen, and you'll hear a faint crackle sound effect. If you have players who are good at spotting them, I found it helps to have someone call out blues every time they appear. That way, even if other players don't see them, they can walk or dodge away from where they're standing. Finally, we have the blue guardian. In a slight twist of irony, blue guardian spawns green circles. A green circle will appear nearby and will have a concentric circle closing in on the center of it. Once it closes on the center, the entire party will take significant damage. To mitigate this, four players need to stand in the green circle when it goes off. So during the pre-event, make sure at least part of your team stacks in the greens when they appear. During the actual fight, a common strategy is to ignore greens and simply heal through them, unless they happen to be close to the stack and convenient for the group to take. In fact, a lot of times we'll bring an extra healer, since the DPS check on this fight is fairly easy, but extra heals help a lot with greens. However, during any split phase, when you're fighting Blue Guardian by himself, it's worth just taking the greens. Blue Guardian has one more mechanic, which is that every 7 seconds he gains a boon that prevents him from taking damage. Use some boon rip to remove it so you can kill him. Once you get Blue Guardian to 1%, you guessed it, break the CC bar to defeat it. Up ahead, you'll see the main arena with Veil Guardian standing in the center. The fight with Veil Guardian is, primarily, just the mechanics of the three individual Guardians happening all at once, though it's split into three main phases that will break things up a bit. I like to place two raid markers here and here. Now is a good time to have your group consume their utility and food. For power food, my personal favorite is... A tasting platter of cilantro lime sous vide steak. To make it, start by heating up your sous vide water to 130 degrees. As it's heating up, season your steak with salt, pepper, and crushed pepper flakes. Then vacuum seal them into bags and drop them into your heated water, making sure they're fully submerged. While it cooks, crush, chop, and dice a few cloves of garlic, then roast it with some olive oil and set it aside. Zest and squeeze a couple of limes into a bowl, then combine 8 ounces of sour cream with the garlic, lime zest, and juice, and chop cilantro all into a food processor and blend for about 30 seconds. Pop the sauce into the fridge and let your steak cook for about 2 hours. Once your steak is fully cooked, just sear it in a cast iron pan with some oil, giving it about a minute on each side. Then just cut it into bite-sized pieces, drizzle the sauce you made across the top, and that's it. A tasting platter of cilantro lime sous vide steak. And if you don't have time for all that, store-bought is fine. Anyway, have the group stack at arrow. The fight will begin when the tank runs in and approaches or attacks Veil vale Guardian, and the tank should then bring him to the stack. Also, there's always a set of blues after the fight starts, often before Veil vale Guardian even gets to the group, so be ready to avoid those. For the first phase, you're just going to stay stacked here and DPS the boss down. Be on the lookout for greens so everyone can prepare to heal right after they go off, or again, you can take them if they're close. Call out and avoid blues as you see them, and push red orbs away from the stack. If your tank happens to get ported by blues, the group should not chase the boss and instead just remain stacked at arrow while the tank brings the boss back. At 66% health, the first split phase will occur. At this stage, everyone who's Condi only needs to run to the red pylon, and everyone else should head to the opposite side, where blue and green will appear. After a brief moment, players will be marked with a symbol and a color that indicates which guardian they're attuned to, and that really just indicates what side you need to stay on. You'll see the ground has large rings like the pre-event that indicate the danger zone for each guardian. You'll want to stick to whatever side you were marked with. Moving to the opposite side will cause you to take a ton of damage unless you have a lot of sustain. 
On the red side, simply DPS him down and break him at 1%. Remember, you will have those red orbs to deal with. Don't be afraid to send one of your healers over that way if the Kandi group is small too. On the blue side, someone can tag Green Guardian to aggro him and bring him over to the stack near the blue pylon. That way you can cleave them down together. Remember, their respective mechanics will still happen as long as they're alive, so be on the lookout for blues to jump out of and greens to jump into. Like before, when any Guardian reaches 1%, it needs to be CC'd in order to be defeated. If one side finishes before the other, they should just hang tight on their side until both sides have cleared their Guardians, then return back to Arrow. This phase is the same as before, with only two added mechanics. Veil Guardian will occasionally gain a Defiance Bar and spit out painful white orbs in all directions. Prioritize CCing when this happens as fast as possible, as they do a ton of damage otherwise. The other change is that now one third of the arena will become very spicy. The segment that's spicy rotates around, so you can still stack an arrow for now, you just need to alternate between which side is clear, so hang out near the line that separates the two segments and you can easily step between either side when you see it switch. At 33%, the split phase happens again, and it's exactly the same as before. Condi players go to the red side, everyone else go to the blue side. Do the mechanics, and kill the mini-bosses. However, this time, after you finish the split phase, you'll want to run to your second marker instead. During this phase, two segments of the arena will be spicy at the same time, leaving only one clear segment to stand on. The safe zone will effectively rotate clockwise, so for the last phase of the boss here, we want to move as far clockwise as we can. Then, as soon as the next segment becomes clear, move clockwise again. You're always trying to move the group clockwise and right up to the edge of the safe zone, so that as the next segment becomes safe, you can immediately move on to it. This also gives you a little bit more leeway in case you need to revive your friends or navigate any of the other mechanics, which will all still be happening during this phase. Realistically, you're going to be on the run for virtually this entire phase, so don't get too cozy if you do pause at the end of a safe segment before moving on to the next. Keep moving, CCing, healing, and killing during this phase. And of course, once he hits 1%, you know what to do.